Jane, how are you doing? Welcome to the show today. I'm doing awesome. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Drew. It's my pleasure. Super excited to have you on today. Um, I kind of want to start by introducing or letting you introduce yourself to my audience, kind of telling us a little bit about your background story and, and you know, what were your passions growing up as a kid that led you down the path of where you are today? Okay, so I grew up with a dad who was a botanist, which okay. basically means a, a guy who studies plants and loves everything plants. And I grew up in the 60s and 70s, so this was kind of when all the fast food and packaged food and all the food that was being made convenient for housewives to feed their families, this was kind of all the big thing during that time. And we never did any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we always had huge gardens. And it used to kind of drive us crazy as kids because it's like we wanted to have Wonder Bread and we wanted to go to McDonald's when it was, you know, because it was becoming really big then. And it just wasn't something that was part of our landscape. So me as one of, I'm second oldest of 14, and I know we talked about wow. this <laughs> yeah. earlier. Um, you know, you first of all, you you either go one way or the other. You either kind of get go into a caregiver kind of a mode, which is mm -hmm. what I did. In fact, it's kind of a, a funny joke in my family. I'm second to the oldest, and my sister, who's a, a, a year older than me, is literally 11 months older than me. And it's always a joke that I'm truly the oldest. Really? Because, well, it's just kind of like, well, there's a whole lot of big stories behind that. But so I think what happened is, of all my siblings, I kind of latched onto this at, at an early age, as far as just the whole holistic. Now, all of us embrace this lifestyle as adults. Mm -hmm. But me as a kid, you know, like I still to this day never smoked a cigarette wow. ever. Um, I'd not even to try it. It just was, I was like, why would I want to do that to my lungs? I really love my lungs. And, and just the whole, I had my first sip of alcohol when I was 34. <laughs> so, and that partly was the culture that I was raised in. Yep. Um, but it was kind of like one of those things when you have a dad who pulls the car over to the side of the road when you're driving somewhere and he wants to identify and teach his kids about plants that are, he sees something and, you know, I can't tell you how many times we would stop and there'd be all these little kids eating weeds by the side of the road if they were edible. So it was just this really amazing childhood that was, you know, a little bit annoying growing up because you don't really realize your gifts when you're in the middle of them. Yeah. But yeah, so that was kind of my background about where I kind of got the love of natural medicine and herbal healing and it just it, I kind of come by it pretty honestly yeah so before we get down to your journey later on I kind of want to talk about your teenage years and college years did you find yourself rebelling at all against your parents because you know that they're trying to push that agenda on you sometimes it can cause kids to rebel do you feel like that happened to you but it sounds like you embraced it from a young age did you keep eating that healthy food while your friends were eating pop tarts and going to fast food places all the time or how did <laughs> well, that work? <laughs> oh, I got to discover all the fast food when I was uh -huh. in my 20s. Gotcha. I got married really young. And I just thought my parents have been depriving me of Burger King and Taco Bell and candy bars and Twinkies and Ding Dongs. And honestly, I, from almost the whole decade of my 20s, because I got married really young yeah. when I was 18. And when you get married, you're, you get to do your own thing or when you move out of the house, right? Yeah. So I ate whatever I wanted. Um, I was, I started teaching exercise classes when I was 18 as well. So I was always super active, but during my twenties, I gained 40 pounds because Whoa. I was, eat, I was eating <laughs> so much crap. So yeah, I rebelled. I rebelled <laughs> at my own expense. Gotcha. Now that's interesting yeah. because, you know, similar to my situation grow, growing up in a family of 11 kids. Um, you know, they, they weren't extreme as far as, um, you know, making us eat the plants in our garden and stuff like that. But my mom always made food from scratch, but to feed 11 kids wasn't always the healthiest foods. It was a lot of peanut butter sandwiches and casseroles and, you know, lentil soups, which would be healthier than the stuff that kids eat, you know, or that my friends were eating. But I would always be envious of my friends at school because they would have like Gushers and Doritos and, and soda. And here I was with like homemade bread with peanut butter and honey sandwiches, you know, and that's all we could eat. And so, yes, when I went to college and I had finally had my own money and had access to these things, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm out of jail. And I could, you know, it's like freedom for a little bit. Yeah, no, I used to be embarrassed to take my little homemade bread with peanut butter and jelly to school. Really? I mean, I used to be I used to be completely embarrassed because everyone was either getting lunch or buying their lunch <laughs> out of the candy machines and 
you know, yeah, I relate to that on a thousand percent. And we always got homemade food that wasn't always the healthiest. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of potatoes, lots of casseroles. Uh, my dad uh, would buy a big, a full beef, which you know that's we're talking about local, grass-fed beef, and we'd have we had a big deep freezer, and all of our roasts and hamburger and everything was wrapped in white, the white butcher paper, and you know, it's, and so that's of course healthier than the meat we get, yeah. a lot of the meat we get now, uh, but yeah, we we ate a lot of starches and a lot of uh, a lot of carbs, because uh, bread and potatoes and pasta fills yeah. up. 11 or 15 <laughs> kids, right? Exactly, 100%. What are some of the most memorable lessons your dad taught you that still stick with you today That from a young age? Yeah, you know, I grew up super unique because of just what my dad did. And we he would have – so he was the doctor of basically medicinal botany. So his PhD was making medicine out of plants. And he formed a company when I was young, and he sold mostly to practitioners like natural doctors and – acupuncturists and chiropractors and all that. And what would happen is at different times during my growing up, he would have like, say, uh, his, when he wrote his book, his best friend who was a chiropractor wrote the forward to it. And then he would come to dinner like every week or every couple of weeks. And all of us little kids would line up and we would get adjustments. Really? And sometimes we would get acupuncture and sometimes we'd get iridology, which is reading the irises of your eyes and we'd get reflexology on our feet. So it'd be like these little healing sessions would happen like on a regular basis from the time I was a baby clear until I left the house. And that was like normal to us, which looking back now, it's like, wow, you know, that this is to me, this is a big stuff that's coming around now. People are looking at natural modalities and things to get well without going on to drugs and, mm. you know, all that stuff. So I would say that's probably the hugest memory. Okay. It's just all these little healings we used to get. <laughs> Crazy, right? That's so cool though. I mean, your dad was the yeah. ultimate, you know, original biohacker. Yeah. <laughs> Before totally. it was even called biohacking. <laughs> it's completely true. And he's teaching all of his little kids to be biohackers. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So you said you kind of rebuild in your twenties, like when you're I'm assuming that your first husband didn't grow up in this world and so he was wanting to eat those those processed foods because everyone else was. At what point did you kind of get into this field then? Well, so I started teaching exercise classes when I was 18. So I got into fitness super early. And mm -hmm. I would really say that fitness saved me mm -hmm. from my bad eating because I right away started teaching classes. I got my, my personal training certification. And I was so I was always in the gym. So when my I have two kids who are now in their 30s, but I dragged them to the gym. The gym is like their second nature for them now as adults mm -hmm. too. But I, I think that um, just the way that I was so active, like at one point I was teaching 17 classes a week. Oh my gosh, yeah. And crazy. it was amazing to me. I, was, I felt amazing. And I still teach to this day. Uh, it's something that is like part of who I am as far as being fit. But yeah, there what, were what do you teach years. and how long have you been teaching it? What do you teach still? <laughs> okay, so right now, I, I've been next year in 2019, I have been teaching for 40 years. <laughs> I know, is that That's insane? That's crazy. And what kind of so, classes do you teach? So, um, well, I've taught everything from body pump to, right now I just teach step. So I teach one step class once a week and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a 24-hour fitness here in Salt Lake City and I have 50 people show up every Saturday and it's a dance party. So I'm just kind of like, how am I still doing this at 57? It blows me away a little. Yeah. I think that's so cool. Okay. So exercise yeah. saved you. And then yes. at what point did you have a career where you're a stay at home mom? When did you get into this field of what you do now though? Yeah. So, um, I was not really a stay at home mom. I mean, I worked at the gym. Okay. Um, I started selling memberships uh, when I was teaching my kids went to school. Then I was, I was, I lived at the gym during okay. the day. Wow. So when I wasn't teaching or training someone, uh, I was selling memberships. And then, uh, when I was 34, I opened my own gym and that was amazing. And I mean, awesome. And it was a big entrepreneurial fail mm. uh, because it's tough. Anytime you go into a business, it's always tough and you learn these big lessons and it's, but, and I, I don't regret any of that, but I also went through a divorce at the same time that mm. I opened my gym. So that wow. was kind of a big deal too. Um, but then what happened is I started really studying nutrition because I, even though I exercised all the time, I didn't feel good. I had constipation. I had bloating. 
I was, and I was really sick of not working so hard, working so hard and not seeing the results. I'm yeah. like, why, you know, I don't, I should have like, I should look amazing <laughs> if I'm teaching all these classes. And so I started studying really deeply and I don't know if you've heard of a book called fats that heal and fats that kill. No, tell us. Okay. So it's, <laughs> It's this huge, thick book. I'm not kidding. It's about this book. It's uh, this thick. It's actually the thesis that was written by a guy named Udo Aramis. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. But this was about 20 years ago. I was reading this book. This was just in my stack of books. And I would read these like they were novels. Mm -hmm. And this was like thick, dense, scientific stuff. And in this book about healthy fats, which is also kind of funny because now we know fats are good for us, right? Yeah. Yep. There's this paragraph on one page about the damaging effects of sugar. It was one paragraph in this big, thick book about, about fats. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, this washed over me, and I was like, I, I don't even believe this because I was a complete sugar addict. Mm -hmm. That was my biggest problem. And immediately, the, like the moment I read that, I was 38 years old. And I stopped sugar. I stopped bread. I stopped pasta. I stopped everything, like immediately. And in about two months, I was 40 pounds down. Wow. Like, <laughs> and I never felt better. I never looked better. And honestly, it's been, it's been almost, it's been almost 20 years and I've never, I've never looked back. So that was just a turning point. I know not everybody gets to click that way. Um, but it was like that made so much sense to me in a reading about all these fats and how they affect us and how they're good for our brain and our, you know, this was a lot, 20 years ago. Yeah. And now now we know, right? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Before the, the whole keto thing became mainstream, you were kind of doing a ketogenic approach. What was um, what what was your food looking like those days? Like what types of foods were you eating back then? Uh, you said you cut out those pastas and breads, but what else were you eating? Well, I ate a ton of vegetables because yeah. right at the same time, I was also reading things like the China study, mm. you know, books that were very, very heavy, vegan, vegetarian. And so I, I became a vegetarian for 12 years Okay. at the same time. So, but I also became a smart vegetarian. Like I didn't, I knew I needed to supplement with my, with B vitamins. Mm -hmm. I knew, I knew that I didn't want to be a vegan or a, a veg, vegetarian that uh, ate too much sugar because you can be a, a very unhealthy vegetarian. Yep. So I was lucky that I had been studying so much about, you know, what's going to keep me healthy. I, at that point, I just wanted vibrant health. I was just like, this is possible. And all my siblings who had also decided, wow, we get to eat all the fast food and junk food and sugar that we want now that we're grown up. All of them have over the years struggled with their weight and stuff too. And and it's now it's like, oh, look, it's not genetic that we have all this stuff around our middle because yeah. we used to blame. Oh, this is genetic because we have all this stuff around our middle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so now I've kind of proven as one of the oldest too. you know, this is this doesn't have to be this way. We have control. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I don't know. That was kind of a roundabout way of no. answering. <laughs> no, that's OK. And we'll get into nutrition a little bit. But you're kind of telling your story of how you kind of got into this field of what you do today. You did the gym. You changed up your diet. Yeah. You read that book. And you're kind of became a smart vegetarian. At what point did you get into this field of what you do today? Well, so my dad passed away uh, 20 years ago, okay. and uh, his company kind of died with him because he was very much a rebel. He was this amazing wild card kind of, <laughs> like he didn't believe in paying taxes. He was yeah. always running from the IRS. He would change <laughs> his business phone number like every six months. And so, if you could get a hold of my dad to place an order for his formulas. It was like you belong to this part of the secret society, right? <laughs> now, yeah. he was like the most quirky, amazing, smart, brilliant, because he was so smart. Um, just kind of a crazy, uh, he was amazing, but kind of yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. So when he passed away, his business died with him because nobody wanted to run my dad's business like he did it. Yeah. You know, none of us wanted to go underground and none of us wanted to. You know, my dad was unique and no one could, we felt like no one could really replace him. Yeah. So what happened is uh, about during those times, the first few years after he died, we started getting harassed by all these doctors who were used to buying his formulas and using them in their practices. Mm -hmm. And so finally, about four years after he died, we got together, we had a family meeting and we were like, somebody has to do something. Yeah. And nobody, nobody wanted, nobody wanted, was interested. So we all left this meeting and 
I call, a few days later, I called up one of my sisters who lives in Idaho, and it was just an intuition I was having. And I said, so what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm driving to lunch to meet with this woman and her daughter. They're, they're botanists. And I was selling her all of my dad's for all of dad's formulas. Whoa. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, and I was working at in corporate America at 24 hour fitness at that point. And I was bitterly unhappy. And I just said, wait a minute. I think I want to do that. I think I want, I think I want to do that. Yeah. And so she literally pulled over. She was on the way. She was like 10 minutes from lunch whoa. to literally, if I had not called her at that moment, <laughs> I mean, so I restarted my dad's company like mm. 16 years ago and it's, it, I started it all over. I do everything legal. I pay all my taxes. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> above board. Uh, and it's grown into this beautiful, um, you know, I get to help people every day. Yeah. You know, my, my formulas, I've got my own line and now I do my dad's too. And I just, I get to see people get well from really serious issues. And it's, uh, it's like what you do, yeah. you know, we get to affect people and make their life better. And you just, and what's interesting is the older I get, it's kind of like, people are like, okay, so what are you doing? <laughs> you know, cause I'm not on any drugs. Yeah. I, so I still have the holistic part of the lifestyle as well. You know, I exercise, I eat right. I forgive quickly. You know, there's the whole component of holistic wellness. Yeah, so. it's not just as simple as taking supplements or even eating healthy and exercising. There's so much more to health and wellness than just that. And we'll get into that yeah. in a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a mental, emotional, and spiritual component as well. Before we get yeah. into that, though, when you took over your dad's company, you know, here you are with these formulas. Did you, was there a learning curve or did you already know like, oh, this formula does this, this formula does that? Like, were you already educated on that? Yeah, so... Uh, my dad took full advantage of having 14 kids and we were his worker bees. So when, and I'm being second oldest, you know, mm -hmm. I was one of the people who my dad put us to work and back in those days. And even when I first restarted my dad's company, we made everything by hand. Wow. So I, I, I did that for the, probably the first 10 or 11 years when I restarted my dad's company, I made everything by hand. And now of course we have everything manufactured at a facility and we had to become FDA compliant. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yeah, there was, the learning curve came um, as all the stuff that used to get thrown at my dad, questions about this virus and this parasite and this fungus and how do I go out, you know, so I, the last 16 years have been a lot of deep study where I have learned so much. In fact, I say now on a kind of regular basis to my siblings, I wish so bad I could talk to dad right now yeah. because I feel like I learned some things that he didn't know, which sounds, I don't mean that disrespectful, sure. but it's like, there's so many things that I've learned and people that I've connected with, uh, that I feel like besides it's a whole different world now, it right? Is. Than, yeah. It's just a smaller you know, world, right? There's social media yeah. and like, you don't have to go, you know, uh, to find research. You can just go on your laptop and find all the research you want. Whereas back in the days, I remember going to the library and having to look up like, you know, old studies or read old books. And it's just now it's at the, you know, your fingertips. Um, I'm yeah. curious to know about your, you know, some of your dad's formulas that you said some doctors were harassing you guys about as far as like, Hey, we want this. Where is it? <laughs> What were some of like his most popular formulas that have done really well over the years? Yeah, so probably the most popular thing we do is is made from a plant called Lomatium. And I think that when I first when I met you the yeah. other day, um, I was kind of talking a little bit about that. So it's a Native American plant okay. that is the common name is desert parsley. And even at that point, most people don't know what that is or mm -hmm. you know. And it's called, it's in the parsley family because the leaves look like parsley. And they, it, so it is in the parsley family, but the part of the plant where it has all of its power is in the root. Okay. And it is what's known as a broad spectrum antimicrobial. So if you think virus, fungus, yeast, and some types of bad bacteria. So it'll even go after SIBO, you know, the bacteria wow. that can overpopulate your gut. So this, this plant made into it we make it into a tincture but we also make it into a capsule form too in a small percentage of people that take it for the first time it can come with a one-time full body really intense detox rash and we so it's um it's healing you but it's really disconcerting and it's really it scares people away from using it but it changes the game like urinary tract infections warts or viral infections wow epstein bar shingles <sighs> No, it wipes these viruses out. Yeah. And um, it's it's very, very, so it's probably 
my dad, he spent 30 years studying this plant and that was probably his biggest gift to uh, the herbal world. Um, you know, my kids are your kids' age and they've never had a prescription antibiotic. So wow. they're 36 and 37. I mean, <laughs> who who does that? Who gets, and I'm not against them. Yeah. I think antibiotics can save your life in the right situation. So, you know, he, he did a lot of other really cool things too. Um, we could talk about that for a couple of hours. Sure. I could just give you the scoop. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. No, so lomatium is what it's called. Yes. Right. And yeah. okay. So now I remember you talking about that. I remember you talking about the rash that happens in like a very small percentage of people, but it's actually healing. Right. Um, yes. uh, so I remember you talking about that. So that's available. Like people can purchase that. Um, are you guys the only ones that create it or are there other companies now that create it? Um, is it pretty widely accessible now? Uh, it's not still widely, widely accessible because it's, but the, you can get it from other companies. Okay. There are some companies that make it that actually do what's called a lomatium isolate where they isolate out the oil faction that causes the rash. Mm. So if you buy a lomatium isolate, um, you're not going to get the rash, but it also takes away part of its power. And uh, I believe it takes away the biggest part of its power gotcha. because not everybody gets the rash, but, um, you know, it's also not cultivated. So you can't take a bunch of seeds and go plant rows and rows and rows of it. Yeah. It's never been successfully cultivated. So it only grows in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. So it grows in one part of the world. <laughs> And we go out every fall as a family. That's when it, the wow. time to wildcraft it, and we wildcraft it as a family. Wow. We still do that. That is so cool. That is awesome. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that you guys do that as a family too. So it sounds like everyone's part of the business now, or not everyone. Uh, no, no. Two, two of my brothers help me wildcraft. Okay. And then my son, my youngest son, uh, is my main, my main guy. Cool. And he. He's kind of spearheads that, and and he's amazing and strong and loves it. He like pulls the root out and he's like gives it love and he's like, oh, you're gonna heal the world. And so yes, we still do, we still do that, but it's uh you know it's tricky because yeah. you can't you can't get a bunch of it and it's very labor intensive to go get it and mm. yeah. Okay. So um, you mentioned some things that you said you wish you could talk to your dad about that you've learned over the years. What are some of the things that you've learned over the years that maybe you know someone back when he was live, just it wasn't available to them? Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, and I'm glad you asked me that mm -hmm. because to me this is super fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, part of what happens when we take the lomation root after we pull it out of the ground, and we know this from doing it this with my dad, you have to have it chopped up into little, like into one inch thick slices. And this is a really tuberous, big root that, I mean, it's an amazing process, but you cut it up into, into slices and you lay it on drying racks and it has to oxidize and cure for, for 60 days Whoa. before. And then you, then we pack it up and we, and now we take it to the manufacturer, but before we used to store it mm -hmm. and then we would make our formulas. So I met about five years ago, I met a, an herbalist at a conference in Oregon who was very familiar with lomatium, but he'd never ever once seen the rash. Mm. And I was like, okay, how can you never see the rash? I mean, like I talked to people, like I've never had a week go by that I don't talk to somebody in the world with a rash. Yeah. Like I've been on vacation in Italy and I'm on the phone talking to someone off the ledge with a rash. <laughs> like literally, this doesn't happen. So yeah. he, so we started talking about the process and what he does is he always makes a fresh root extract. He never lets it oxidize. So what I, what I learned from that piece of this is like when you do a fresh root extract, it doesn't carry the same medicinal benefits because it does. It, there's no potential for a rash. Oh. So it's obviously changing the properties when you oxidize it. Mm. So to me, that was one thing because my dad. That was. It's the dealing with the rash is really difficult because gotcha. people are scared and it's it's emotional. It's itchy. It's uncomfortable. It's unsightly, <laughs> and you know it's not fun to go. Through. So that's that's probably one thing. Um, and just the whole, there's a whole autism component okay. uh, with Lyme disease that uh, I find very fascinating. Um, this was probably 12 years ago. I got a call from a doctor named Dr. Dietrich Klinghart who said he'd been using our Lomatium in his practice. And he treats mostly autism. He's a medical doctor, but he is, has, is very well known for treating autism naturally. And he said, I just want to let you know that we're using this in, in our practice and 100% of the kids on the autism spectrum are getting the rash. Not 10%, not 20%, 100%. Wow. 
And what he believes is that this, and I believe this now too, is that the lomatium gives your body the ability to release a long-standing, dormant, toxic load, like a viral load. And a lot of these kids uh, test positive for Lyme disease. So when they, uh, you can get Lyme disease in utero. So say the mom is infected with Lyme, but maybe nobody knows it. Mm. The baby gets Lyme because the baby gets it in utero. The baby's born with a fragile system and maybe like the MMR vaccine tips them into autism. And and, and there's controversy about that. Mm. Um, but he sees that when they actually are able to release the viral load with this rashum lamation, that a lot of their Lyme disease issues and their autism, it, I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. So that would be one thing that I would love to tell mm. my dad. Like, check this out, how cool <laughs> this is. You know, yeah. we're helping these kids. We're helping these kids recover. Yeah. That's so cool, though. I know I remember you talking a lot about this uh, when we were at lunch the other day. Um, tell us about some of your formulas, things that you've discovered, you know, and it, uh, put together um, that, that are kind of like your claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, so this has been super fun. This is probably <clears throat> one of the funnest things that I do because um, what I've found, and this is one thing. So when I restarted my dad's company, literally there has not been a day that goes by that we don't get a call or a question on an email from somebody we love your stuff, but what do you have for weight loss, right? Because <laughs> yes. we, there's such a big, long reputation reputation with my dad's formulas. And, you know, <clears throat> these are like really proven amazing things. So it's like you must have something for weight loss. And whatever you have, I'm sure it's amazing and I trust it completely. So we, I brought out a weight loss formula uh, that I call clean fat loss mm -hmm. that I'm super proud of because it, there's no stimulants in it. There is a little tiny bit of naturally occurring caffeine from the green tea I put in it. There's theocrine, which comes from Assam tea, which is mimics caffeine without the crash. And there's uh, herbs that support and nourish your thyroid, which is, depends your metabolism on that. Um, and and so and then I also have a new tropic, which I know I got a bottle in your hand. Yes. That oh. one I'm super proud of. Mm -hmm. um, so that, those are probably my two. But I've I've. And I have a skin line, a skin serum that yes. was never meant to be a product. <laughs> oh, you're like, yes. Can you tell? Um, so, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, right. You looked good already. I'll, I'll mention it in a second, but you can keep going. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, think, I think the biggest thing, well, like, for example, when I was 40, I started getting all of my silver removed because I did, like, growing up, we didn't really see the dentist. So when I became an adult and I got married, I started going to the dentist mm -hmm. and I had silver in all four quadrants of my teeth. Yep. And when I started, when I was about 40, I, I decided, you know what, I need to get these removed because, because you learn, you learn, you don't want these amalgam fillings in your teeth, yeah. but then you learn, you have to remove them safely so you don't get mercury exposure. Uh, and then you have to take supplements to protect yourself. So I stay, started taking a broken cell wall Corella, which is a heavy, it was a chelator and it helped your body attaches your, the metals attached to it and helps you expel it. So I started taking things like Corella, turmeric, cayenne pepper for your heart, um, spirulina, and I was just taking them. I wasn't selling them. Gotcha. Uh, and so people used to ask me, so what do you do? I'd be on the phone, they'd take an order, and I they would say, well, so what do you do? And i say, well, I take this, this, and this. Well, can I get this from you? <laughs> no. And so I, about six years ago, I brought I brought a few things out that were like, people just kept asking me for them. So, and I tweaked them a little bit. I added some stuff to them and, um, they're all things to me like longevity, superfoods. Um, I mean, I've been doing turmeric for 17 years now and now turmeric's huge, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it seems like you've been ahead of the curve on most of this stuff and your dad too. <laughs> yeah. And I honestly think it's just the way I was raised and yeah. I, I think that's a big chunk of it. I really do. Yeah. So, so two fold the question here, you mentioned cayenne pepper. I was going to ask you, what are some of the most common herbs that are overlooked in, you know, supplementation or diet, um, similar to cayenne. And then also yeah. what are some of the most, uh, not so well known that, you know, that would people would want to learn about that it would, you know, people should go research other than, um, shoot, what's the antimicrobial one you mentioned? It starts with L. L Lomatium. <laughs> yeah, Lomatium. Yeah, Lomatium. I haven't had that memorized yet. So I'm going to give you some of that kay. so that you and it's going to be become your favorite once you start using it. Okay. Truly, especially during cold and flu season or when you travel. Yes. I, I always tell people, when you know me, if you know me, you should not ever be sick. 
Yes, exactly. Well, so, I'm looking forward to that. So do you remember the questions? I do. Okay, I do. There's, so, there's a lot okay, to so, <clears throat> so I would say things like, okay, think about your kitchen cupboard. Mm -hmm. You have turmeric, you have cayenne pepper, you have, sometimes you have basil, you have oregano. Mm -hmm. Your kitchen cupboard with full of spices is one of your most powerful things. But here's the thing. If you have spices that have been sitting in your cupboard longer than three months, mm. they've lost all their medicinal power. Oh. <laughs> so, and most people have things that like, I, I just, I just filmed this segment about this uh, for a, a, a online herbal course that I'm doing. And the guy who was filming it for me, he kind of looked around the camera and he goes, okay, so I've been married for 17 years and I have a, a, a thingy of spices that we got for our wedding. Like those little round things, you know? And yeah. I said, dude, you need to chuck that because yeah. you are getting nothing out. You're probably not even getting any flavor. Yeah. So basil, if you can get basil in your, from a garden, yeah. you can get rosemary. Um, you can get your uh, parsleys, like Italian parsley and regular parsley and chives. Like I have buckets of this, pots of this growing in my yard right now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, these foods, these are superfoods that have more nutritional value than your vegetables, yeah. like lettuces and carrots and all the stuff that we know we're supposed to eat. These yeah. things contain more of a medicinal power punch nutrition wise. Than, than any of your fruits and vegetables wow. combined. Wow. So that's probably the most overlooked thing. People, they need to first of all go through their spice cabinet and if anything, share things or buy little tiny things. Mm -hmm. Don't buy a big thing of, mm -hmm. if you, unless you're gonna use it up. Yeah. Because otherwise it might flavor. And then like pepper, like pepper that you sprinkle on your food. If you don't grind up your pepper, pre pepper fresh, once it's been oxidized and it's just sitting in little flakes and a pepper thing, you get nothing from it. Yeah. Not, no, no benefits. You might get a little bit of flavor, but you're getting no benefits. Um, and then as far as things that people need to look at, I would suggest people take a look at cat's claw. Hmm, what's that? Is, <clears throat> so this is a rainforest herb and it is a powerhouse, anti-inflammatory. It's what's known as opener of the way. It balances intestinal flora. And it also, so it goes after inflammation, intestinal flora, and it also is powerful anti-cancer mm. just so for, for prevention. And it's, it, so people with arthritis or serious inflammation issues, um, cat's claw is a powerful, powerful, um, like herbal arsenal to have in your toolbox. Okay. So, and, and there's a, the, yeah, oh, sorry. You can buy the capsule form, pill form. You can buy it in capsule form. You can also buy it in liquid form. Okay. So that, and we actually make we actually make a herbal extract of it. So, mm. it what's nice about that is it goes right to the bloodstream. So it's so like, like a liposomal a liquid, type of dropper thing, or what? It's no, it's not liposomal. The, all the tinctures that we do are all uh, they're um, in 190 proof organic cane alcohol. They're not extracts, okay. and we don't any, we don't do any liposomal. Um, but liposomal is good. But anytime yeah. you do a liquid, your body doesn't have to digest it. It can simply go right to the bloodstream and go to work very quickly. So, so that probably tastes horrible, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, but it's only it's just like a, like a dropper size, right? Yeah. Okay. And you can dilute it. Like we suggest that you put it in a little bit of water. Like anytime you're doing a liquid herbal, um, and people shy away from them because they don't taste good, which is a total shame. Yeah. Because they work so quick and they're so pure. And besides, our taste buds have kind of been messed up by all the processed food and junk food. And we want everything to taste really super good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. Cat's Claw, uh, Lomatium, I got that that time. <laughs> Anything yeah, else? That, what's that? Suma. Suma. Suma root. What's that? Suma. So Suma comes from Brazil. And Suma is what's known as an adaptogenic herb. It helps to balance body chemistry. It's also naturally high in very absorbable iron. So if someone is anemic, has low blood iron, now it's not gonna mess them up. Like if you got an iron supplement, you would probably constipate you and it might mess up your iron levels. Mm. But this is this goes in and it kind of, I like to look at Suma root as it goes in, it looks around, and it sees what needs to be balanced. Mm. So it actually is what's known as an adaptogenic herb. It adapts to the environment. Okay. So if you need this, it will help you with this. It's very, very, very powerful. It's 
got a lot of amazing properties and that's something I take every day and have for 20 years. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. what about, um, you know, the most common ones that you would give to kids that you think most kids need growing up are, are all these, you know, would you give kids all of these, the ones that you're mentioning? I'm assuming you can, but also like which ones would be the most important as kids are growing, you know, um, that yeah. are safe. Well, uh, they, uh, these are natural and God made, yeah. so they are all set. But the thing is, kids don't usually have as many issues as adults do, yeah. especially in our modern world when you get your, you let your health get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the lomatium would be the number one thing that I would want to raise my kids with yeah. because um, of how powerful it is and all the things that little kids get while they're building their immune system, you know, like, like ear infections and cold and flu and you know kids are around other kids during school and they come they pick up everything and come home with everything so lomatium is very safe i gave it to my own kids when they were just a couple of months old and now my grandkids take it and so i would say that would be um that would be something i would never want to raise my kids without but you can also give your kids uh cayenne pepper you can give them you know, um, you can give them pretty much almost anything, but the thing is kids don't usually need, need them like yeah. adults, you know, especially if you feed them well. Um, and if they take an antibiotic, then you need to make sure they get some really good probiotics in their system. I mean, everybody's knowing about this stuff now. Gotcha. You know, and what about women and, and hormones? So let's say, you know, uh, That's menopause right. or, um, you know, uh, their menstrual cycle, like things that can help support yeah. healthy hormones for women. Yeah, that's a really good question. Now, let me, the number one thing that women need to pay attention to when they're, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I denied it for a long time that I was going through that <laughs> uh, just because you don't ever want to think you're getting older. Um, but the number one thing for women is lifestyle. Because I mean, even though our hormones do change, and I would suggest that every woman go get a hormone panel. It's just a simple blood, a blood draw, and you can get a full hormone panel and see what you're, what's happening. And there are foods that you can eat that actually will help balance hormones and you and then, then I have an herbal that might was one of my dad's original formulas is actually in capsule form mm -hmm. and I've been on that for about eight years or six herbs in it and uh, that's one reason I take the suma is because gotcha. it helps to balance body chemistry while my body's going through the changes uh, but if you have a clean lifestyle and you go really low really low or no alcohol mm -hmm. um, your body can survive these hormonal changes a lot better than if you don't you know exercise every day you know, it's not just about throwing a supplement or an herb at hmm. something like that, sure. even though that can make a big difference. But if you don't put into check these other lifestyle factors, um, you can't just expect an herb to take care of something that, you know, you're just living, you know, if you, yeah, you have to live, you have to eat, <laughs> you have to eat healthy. And if you, if some people need to dial it in a little bit, you know, yeah. dial it in tighter. And if you're willing to do that, um, you'd be surprised how you can survive those hormonal changes as you get older. Yeah, and I think it's really important we bring this up. Even you as a supplement owner, you know, it's important to talk yeah. about supplements role, yeah. right? It does not replace living sure. a healthy lifestyle. It's not the magic pill where you can eat whatever you right. want to and then you take these pills and you look amazing and your hormones are balanced and you don't have to change anything about you. I wish there was an easy path in life, but there's not. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work so, that way. I mean, I to, me, to, to me, this is what I say to people when they come to me and ask me, what should I take so I can be as healthy as you? I'm like, Tell me what you're eating. <laughs> As the first thing there. I ask, yeah. I always start there. And then, and then, or if someone says to me, well, I can't afford all these supplements that I'd really like to take. Well, what are you eating? So don't, don't take any supplements, but dial in your lifestyle. Yeah. Afford really good food. Or afford really organic food. Pay attention to what you're eating. Forget the supplements. You know, start with your diet. If you think you can't afford it, or if you are eating a crappy lifestyle, I don't want to sell you supplements because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're not going to work for you like they need to anyway. Yeah. So. Awesome. You mentioned an online herbal course. Uh, where can people find that out? Or is that for everybody or is that just for? So it's, it's uh, I, I opened it up in January to a beta group. Okay. And I've been adding content to it every week. And then coming in January, I'm going to release it again. Um, and it's just going to be, it's, it's, uh, it's actually coming together really beautifully. And my goal is to be able to teach people about herbs, about herbal medicine, to be able to say things that I can't really say when I tell people about what I do because I can't make claims. I have to be super careful. Um, you know, I, I have some really powerful protocols that I can't really talk about, but inside of a private course, 
I can I can say I can still make my disclaimers and say, look, hey, I'm not a doctor. This is just my own experience. This is just to educate you. But inside this private course, I can actually talk about these things. So there's little videos and education PDFs about this about what I do and how and how I what I would do if I got cancer. You know, I mean, I, I put it all out there. Yeah. So it's I'm going to re-release it in January. And then it'll be a full course by then. And right now, I just opened it up. I uh, got a hundred people in, and I'm just I'm polishing it up. Okay, so right cool. now it's not, not available. So yeah. you know, which means people have to follow you, stick around, stay tuned, wait till <laughs> uh, wait till next January to join that. Yeah, which is not that far away, really. It's true, and time flies. Like I notice, the older I get, I get the faster time goes by. You know, it's already June of 2018. I can't believe that. So. Um, That's crazy. Really quick, I want to end on this note before we tell people where to find you is uh, one of my favorite quotes is from Tony Robbins and he says, you know, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. So for you, Jane, what is it in your life that brings you ultimate fulfillment? Oh, I love this question because to me, when I, like I get up early because I love what I do so much. Mm -hmm. Um, When I open up my email and there's an email from somebody telling me how what I do change their life or the life of someone they love or I get a phone call. I mean, I, you can't replace the fact that you can change one life's person, one person's life. To me, that is like the most fulfilling thing. It enriches me so much. It gives me total purpose. Um, and I, you know, for the biggest chunk of, um, after I started my dad's business, restarted it, I, you know, I, I didn't, was hardly making any money and I honestly didn't care. Yeah. Because I was so happy. I was so happy that I was getting to do something, carrying on my dad's legacy. That was huge. And being able to, uh, immediately I started getting, I mean, not a day goes by that someone, I don't get something from somebody somewhere on social media, on my email, somewhere where someone says, like just before I talked to you, there was this amazing email, this woman I've been helping for the last few months, her Graves disease is completely gone. Really? <laughs> like wow. just before I got on the phone with you or on this call. So it's, to me, that's success. Yeah, I love that. You know, it's perfect. That is beautiful. Yeah. Um, Jane, where can people find you on social media, your website, uh, any other information you wanna put out there, we'll put in the show notes, but so people listening, they can find you. Yeah, uh, so my website is barlowherbal.com. Um, I'm on, uh, Instagram at, at Barlow Herbal. Uh, and then I'm on, um, Facebook with three pages. I have Barlow Herbal, Jane Health, and then I have my private page, which is, uh, uh, Jane Barlow Christensen. Okay. So that's, and, and, and then I have a YouTube channel, which is Barlow Herbal. And there's actually some really good things that people could learn about that I've put uh, over the years have put on YouTube. Okay. We'll put so, all, a link to all those in the show notes. And uh, Jane, I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate what you do and the impact that you make in this world. So keep keep up the good work and keep moving forward in life, Jane. And I appreciate you, you coming on. Thank you, Drew. It was so <laughs> nice to be on. I can't believe I just barely met you and you've had the podcast. So thank you. I'm loving it. Thank you so much, Jane. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.